What's up, coaches? Coach Career from General Gridiron. Before we get started today, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel as we're going to create more content to come in the future. And that way we have a chance for you guys to, you know, we could get some feedback on things you guys would like to talk about. Today's topic is strong side outside zone against even and odd structures. We're going to concentrate on the, the, the front side of the line, back side of the line play, running back aiming point and reads. Um, from there, we may talk about some of the stuff we could do with the keeper out the back end and how you kind of can see things develop. So let's get right into the play. Today's play, we're gonna focus, we're gonna start from the tight end and work backwards so you guys get a clearer picture of what to understand. So against the 4-3 defense, you need the first thing you need to understand is that these are the rules. Covered linemen reach, uncovered linemen have to pull and overtake. So what I mean by that, if we got a head up six technique or nine technique, whatever you call this guy. The way I've learned it, we're gonna we, we're gonna label this seven eight nine. So this is actually an eight technique. We have a head up eight technique. The tight end here, the Y is covered, so he is gonna reach. The guy next to him is uncovered, so he's gonna pull and overtake. Now these two have to take care of these two. So this is gonna be called sort of us call whatever you want to call it. Some people give the number, so it's gonna be us to let's say this is fifty six. Us center and guard have a us call here to the mic let's say the mic's call 50 so it's us to mic so in this situation the guard is covered the center's uncovered so the guard has to reach the center has to pull and overtake so back to here so we're going to start with the tight end and right tackle who are on a us call to number 56. tight end is going to take an outside his outside fire step and try to work his head to the outside of the defensive end. The, le the right tackle is gonna take is gonna take a pull step and get lateral and try to get his head towards the outside of the defensive end. So if this out if this de defensive end tries to spike outside, the wide tight end will lock on and run him on run him on the track trying to stretch stretch him wide. The right tackle will climb to cut off the play side linebacker. If the defensive end spikes his side, now the right tackle is gonna pull and overtake and the Y is gonna slip off and take the play side linebacker. Same scenario here with the center and right guard. If the three technique tries to, to fight outside, then the right guard will stretch him, stretch him wide if he could, and the center will climb to cut off the mic. If he jumps inside, the center will take him, and the right guard will climb and cut off the mic. On the back side, play side rules for the back side is always scoop. So the, right, the left guard is always gonna scoop the A, and the left tackle will scoop the B. So, if this one technique tackle tries to fight into the A-gap, then he's gonna get scooped by the right left guard who will try to work his head to the outside and keep him away from the play side. And this left tackle is gonna climb and take the will. The backside defensive end will get held by the keep of the quarterback, okay? Obviously you see the strong safety here. Let's assume they started in too high up here and he walks down. We don't have a hat for him. So this Z has to push crack and take care of him. So we've taken care of the, the O-line, front side and back side. Now let's talk a little bit about the running back, the running back's aiming point and his reads. The running back is gonna is aiming directly for the butt of the tight end. Now I know there's people that have different theories on this, but the way I learned it from a reliable resource is that he's gonna aim for the butt of the tight end. And he's reading, this is the number one read here, the guy sitting on the tight end. The second read becomes the next guy inside who would be the three technique tackle. So once we clear one, if one is cleared, you start looking for two. If one jumps way outside and doesn't let us get outside, then we're gonna, we're gonna press it right now and shoot it inside as soon as we can get back on track to get outside because we're trying to get outside to the numbers on this play. That's why it's called wide zone. A lot of people say you could bend it back 
the theory of wide zone wasn't meant for it to bend all the way back. So if he jumps outside, you shoot it right now and then try to get back on track and get numbers, ha hash to numbers the sideline. Okay, so we take care of the strong safety with the push crack at him and we'll leave the corner unblocked because in most cases, most cases at any level of football that I've coached, corners are not the greatest tacklers and the, the targets who I call the safeties are definitely better tacklers. So we want to take care of the targets in that situation. Obviously, we're going to hold the back end, backside end with the keep. You can see the pass, the pass possibilities. We can start building off that keep. That, but that'll be a subject for another day. So there's outside zone versus an even front, where, just a reminder, covered lineman, reach, uncovered lineman, pull, and take over. That same principle, backside of the line is gonna scoop the A and scoop the B. Odd structure, same principles apply. Covered is gonna reach, uncovered, is gonna pull and overtake. So in this situation where we have a Sam shaded on the Y, this guy's considered cover. So he has to reach him, working his head to the outside. When he works his head to the outside, he needs to, his inside hand needs to be hard on his sternum. So we could try to work outside, work outside and stretch him if he wants to stretch. And if he tries to throw you off and come back underneath, that allows you to kind of Turn, stay with him and not get thrown off of your block. He's gonna play hard on this Sam and play hard with the inside hand and not let him get thrown off and let the Sam come underneath and destroy the play. Now, the right tackle is covered. So he's gonna try to work his head placement and hand placement, get to the outside. Right guard's uncovered, he's gonna pull and overtake. If this end jumps outside, the tackle is gonna lock on, work his head to the outside and either stretch him with the play, keeping his head between him and the ball carrier, or if he falls back inside, the right guard takes him and the right tackle climbs to cut off the play side linebacker. So here's the us call. Let's say this is 56 again. We got an us call to 56. He steps outside, we're gonna lock on and either run him, work our head position so we could seal this block off. If he steps inside, the right guard is gonna overtake him trying to work his head to the outside, and he's gonna climb for the mic. If he tries to jump inside, the right tackle is gonna climb for the mic. Center and backside guard. Now, his rule on the backside, the center has a man on him, so he has to work to get his head placement to the outside with a strong inside hand. If he tries to jump to the play side A, he is gonna overtake him and work his head, stay in the outside position, and try to either work him off the field or run, stretch him wide. The right guard is gonna climb to the mic and cut off the mic. They have a us call here. So his scoop, his rule on his scoop is the A gap. If he tries to back dorm, he's gonna take the nose tackle and the center will climb to the mic. If he tries to jump to the play side, he will immediately work with a prior two hand read and then climb up and seal off the backside mic. We gotta protect the B gap here. If this end spikes inside, he's gonna take him. If he tries to spike outside, he can't affect this play and he'll just climb to cut off something. If he's got to get a piece of the mic who's hanging around or cut off anything that's coming, maybe the wheel's trying to fall back in or the corner's pursuing to the ball. He's just going to kind of slice into this and make sure nothing violates this B gap and look for work. Once again, we're going to hold this wheel with the backside fake. And obviously you can see the, the pass possibility off the keep here with the H and the X. Running back's aiming point, again, his read, Starts with the Sam and is going to work to the four technique tackle. If the Sam tries to fight outside, he's going to press the hole right now and work to get back on track. If he fights inside, he just stays the course. We will take care of the overhang once again with the push crack because we don't have a hat for the overhang. The overhang will get taken care of by the Z who's going to push the corner off the ball and then try to seal this alley here because we're ultimately we're trying to get this ball into this alley out here from the hash to the numbers. His aiming point is the butt of the tight end. His read starts with the Sam. His second read becomes, becomes the end. So what that means is once he clears number one, let's say number one jumps outside, now his read becomes number two. If he jumps inside, he just presses the ball outside. He continues pressing the ball outside. Same thing over here. If one 
once we clear one, let's say one jumps outside, his next read becomes here. So that, that that's what I'm talking about. He could press it in here, but then work to get back on track. Same thing here. So the, the theory that you could bounce, you could bend this play all the way back by the center is not true. That's not the way the play was designed. The play is designed to get outside. Hash to numbers, the numbers to hash, however you want to call it. That's the theory of the outside zone. So this is what I got for you today. Outside zone strong versus even in our structures. Until the next time, coaches. Coach Korea.